Hey guys, in this video I want to walk you through uh, the process of how I finished up the last phase of my album, which was the embellishing uh, part. And the beginning portion of this video is just going to show you some of the steps that I went through uh, to get this album done. I won't show you the me doing the entire thing because I repeated some of the processes over and over again uh, throughout the album. And then at the end of this video, uh, there is a full walkthrough of the completed album talking about some of the specific pieces as well. So first off, what you are seeing me do is I am using red line tape to adhere those large chipboard letters uh, into the inside cover of my album. Uh, I decided to put those on the inside. Some people like to embellish the outside of their albums. I am more a uh, inside person. Sometimes I do inside of the cover. Sometimes I don't do it at all. Uh, my albums sit on a shelf where the uh, front covers are touching each other. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to embellish uh, that part of it. And um, also for me, I'm just more focused on the inside content than I am on something that would go on the outside. So red line tape is my um, adhesive of choice for embellishments like this or for the rubber pieces that were included in the kit. Uh, and you can see here that I'm just cutting up a few little pieces and putting them around um, on the on some of the edges and some of the insides of that large chipboard ampersand uh, you know you could use more if you wanted to you could use a little bit less if you wanted to this is just kind of the amount that I generally find works well on there uh, one of the questions that people have is why what's the M for and the M is for McCurcher um, that's Aaron's last name so we've got two last names here and uh, uh, so the ampersand works well for that as well. So just going through that process, um, Redline Tape is double-sided adhesive and um, it is very sticky. So if you have something that you really want to stick down, uh, this, is, this is definitely a go-to piece for me. Uh, another thing that you will see, I think I just showed this at the, at, with the for the full walkthrough, I did end up adding um, one of the perforated strips above the letter E uh, that said a week in the life of us. And that was pretty much the only other thing that I added into that portion. Now, if you've watched my other videos for this album, you've seen me work through the process of adding the photos. Um, and uh, so I already printed all of my photos and I already added the chip squares onto some of my six by eight pictures and I also added um, a couple pieces from the chipboard alphabet to the uh, the quotation marks and then the um, the asterisks as well so those are the things that I had already done before I started filming the video uh, I'll talk more about this um, the flip up which is what I did for I did it on Monday and on Tuesday and a flip up um, is easily made by yourself and this is how I do it is I use a rolling adhesive to adhere two photos back to back and then I use washi tape on both the inside and the outside um, and here you'll see usually when I do it I like to do it bef without them laying out flats because I want to fold it over because that's how it's going to live in the album and if you put it on there when they are uh, laying down flat when you go to fold it sometimes it's too tight to actually fold so so um, by putting the uh, tape on while the photos are stacked on top of each other, that seems to give it a little bit more give than when it's inside the pocket. So after I do the exterior, then I go ahead and put adhesive, or excuse me, the um, uh, washi tape on the inside as well. And then I have a nice little flip up right there that can go directly into the pocket. And so I did that twice, uh, just representing kind of three different photos that I had taken. This one was three different photos throughout the day. Uh, and then on Monday, it was three different photos just within a short period of time with different kids sitting at the table. Uh, next up, what I did before, even before I really went through and started stamping all the times on, uh, I had made a decision when I started printing my photos that I wanted to have all my pockets filled with photos. That means that I didn't use the journal cards that are included with the kit um, as journaling cards. And this is just a personal decision. It really depends on what you are doing, what the goals are for your album. Do you want to add more page protectors? Do you need uh, more space for story? Do you need more space? 
space for photos. It's really uh, kind of an individual decision. And this year, what I decided to do was rather than adding any of the cards from the kit into the pockets, I decided to cut up the cards and use those as embellishments. Uh, if you've taken my Storytelling with Project Life workshop, uh, you might have seen me use this technique in the past for creating new journal cards. Um, this is something that I like to do. I like to cut them up. I like to change them up to make them more usable for me. So that's what I'm doing here is just cutting out some of the designs that were included on uh, the journal card so that I can then add them to my photos uh, during the process of putting the the time stamp on them. So pretty much what you'll see me doing, af see me do after I cut up these cards is go through and um, stamp the time onto each photo as well as add some kind of an embellishment. So I'm either gonna be adding these things that I'm cutting up right here, I'm gonna be adding one of the perforated phrase strips, um, word, or fr word or phrase, perforated strips um, or some of the sticker bundle, uh, just any kind of embellishments. And you, you know, you can use things from the kit. You can use other products that you might have on hand, whatever, you know, whatever you like to do to tell your own story. So, um, you know, I, I think one of the things that is nice for people to learn about working with kits too is that uh, you can do lots of things with them. Like they don't have to be, you know, the cards don't have to be used in that specific way. And I don't feel like you need to feel like you, you are wasting them by not using the full cards. You can absolutely save the cards and use them for another project. Um, I just decided that I wanted to create some additional embellishments by cutting out the cards and I'd already filled um, all of my pockets with my photos. All right, so next up then is the phase where I went ahead and dealt with all of my photos. And so basically what I ended up doing is I pulled them all out um, and I did just one page at a time. You know, I didn't pull them all out of the album at once and then start going through that process. I just went page by page and I used my time roller stamp and then used the journaling that I had already printed out as the guide uh, to tell me what the times were supposed to be. Uh, you will see me make some mistakes here and there like putting p.m. instead of a.m. Uh, and that I did that kind of in the beginning and then I seemed to get better <laughs> at making sure I had it on a.m. or p.m. Um, you'll also hear me in the in the in the final portion of this video talk about how uh, there's one place where I made, where I covered up that mistake with a sticker and the rest of them I just left and I, I'm not too worried about um, that part of it because you'll be able to tell when you're looking at the picture itself that the time is probably wrong. Um, and so when I am stamping, I'm using stays on ink to stamp with the time roller stamp directly onto my photos. And when I'm doing that, I'm generally looking for a lighter space within the photo to hold the time. Um, if there was no light space available, then I used some of the little white flags that were included with the kit. Sometimes I turned them um, over to the other side. Sometimes I left them with the design on them, just kind of depended on you know, what, what kind of, what piece of the story did I want to tell? Um, there I added, um, one of the little circles that I cut out from a journal card. I added, um, afternoon, which was one of the words from one of the, uh, one of the journal cards there. And then I'm, I just turned over all those little flags so that I could see kind of where they were. Also on the stamp set that was included with the kit, there are some words that may work really well, um, for, embellishing on top of your photos. That one says reading, uh, which is something that I do often at lunchtime. Uh, so pretty much it's just that process of looking at the options that you have in front of you, uh, which is one of the reasons why I like using a kit um, and, and basically because that limits the number of options that I have. I'm working directly from the products that were included plus that sticker bundle. So the sticker bundle definitely gave me uh, some additional options for thing that I, things that I may want to add directly onto the photos. But I'm not going back through all of the other products that I own. I'm not looking through all of them, you know, to, to find the, the perfect embellishment uh, to add on here before I move forward. I'm just basically using what I have in front of me that's out on the table right now. 
So here is, this is uh, moving on with Monday, and I wanted to just show, you know, I'm not going to, you're not going to see Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of, of this part of the process because I essentially repeated the same thing throughout. So every time I encountered a new photo, I went ahead and added the rolling timestamp, and then I added some uh, a word phrase sticker or perforated uh, word phrase strip or something like that, some or a rubber embellishment, something or a flag, um, something added on just a, a little bit of something. Uh, and you might have heard me talk about in a previous video, previous process part where I, where I considered handwriting additional stories onto the photos, but I found as I was doing it that I was fully satisfied just adding the time and then a phrase sticker, mainly because my journaling and the story is really already told um, in in the, the longer section where I have all of those words together. You also just saw me right there kind of rearrange my photos based on the time Generally, my photos are going from morning until evening throughout the pockets, um, but there were some places where I just kind of, I put them where I felt like I felt they were most balanced, um, visually balanced, but it, you know, that's not a big deal either. And so here I'm kind of readjusting where some of the three by four photos went inside the pockets themselves. Again, just looking through the stickers, looking through the words and phrases, um, either as from that sticker bundle or the other products to find just little words that support each one of the photos and sometimes they're a loving or a supportive phrase and other times they're something silly and other times they are just a fact like breakfast or lunch or you know grocery store or something like that. Um, I, I liked the opportunity to have those mix of some of those really basic uh, sorts of things that we do over the course of the day as well. Uh, so this is essentially what I did then for all of the other days. I just continued this to follow the same process. It took a couple hours to go through um, and pull them all out and stamp them and then put them back into the pockets. But I don't feel like it was an unmanageable amount of time. It's just you know, part of bringing this whole big process together uh, and part of the beauty of it too. I think that, you know, it, it's a really kind of a lovely opportunity to go back through, to read what I had written, to then, um, you know, kind of kind of rethink about each of the stories that go along with the photos while I am taking the time to add the time uh, on there and embellishing them as well. Uh, so just a couple other views of some of the things that I did here before I uh, dive into showing you the completed album. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them either uh, below this blog post or if you're watching on YouTube in the comment section, I'm happy to answer those as well. Here you can see that I'm just using the red line tape to adhere one of the small rubber circle rubber circle pieces uh, directly onto my photo. That's the adhesive we recommend for those uh, pieces there. And I just really hope that you enjoy the process. I hope you enjoy each one of the processes for this project. And uh, I always love to hear how people approached it, um, you know, and, and what your approach is in, in taking care of all this content. You know, you've done the work of documenting, then how do you bring it all together into uh, this kind of, uh, or this, this final, you know, piece that, that really takes care of all of that content. Um, Love the, love, love the project for sure. Uh, just using a white pen, that's a POSCO pen, P-O-S-C-O, to be able to white, write in white. Hey guys, it's Allie, and I am here today to give you a full walkthrough of my completed Week in the Life album. All right, let's go ahead now and take a look at uh, everything all done and all put together here. You saw some of the beginning steps of the approach that I was taking for each of the days. Uh, and now let's take a look just at the completed album itself. I always love when I'm done with this project and get to move on to the next thing and then I will tackle it again next year. I, I like actually like that process of it and I like the uh, that it's a season, right, that I encounter again and that will come up again. Um, and I, as always, I like having a project that has a beginning and an end and, and is now completed and I can move on to some of the other projects that I am working on. Um, okay, so first off, you saw I adhered the some of these alphabet letters. I'll be using these probably in some other um, 
traditional pages, maybe in Project Life, probably in some traditional pages too. I just used red line tape to adhere those and then one of the uh, perforated strips, A Week in the Life of Us, I used that uh, to go right along the top there. You guys saw this previously. I still need to reprint this picture with the correct date on there and that's something that I'll do here soon. Um, again, the introduction to the beginning of the album, um, stating my, you know, kind of my reason why and, and that sort of thing as well for, for this book. Uh, then we move into Monday, journaling on its own page. Uh, I like, again, I like that um, approach it, you know, you don't have to do it this way. You can add words on to your photos. You can add words on to the cards. This for me just simplified and really allowed me to batch process this whole project by tackling first the words. Well, first I did the title page and that reason why page. Then I tackled the words, then I tackled the photos. And then at the end here, I have added on embellishments um, and the time onto each of my photos. So as we go into Monday there, you can see that I've been um, adding some kind of word or phrase embellishment to go along with all of my uh, date stamps that I use the time roller stamp for. Here's that flip up again that I did on a couple of days uh, where there was kind of a series of photos and just adding in really simple uh, embellishments there. Coming into the actual days in Monday, again, uh, times on each of them there I stamped reading using the uh, set that was included with the um, kit this year and then adding just stickers. Stickers either from the kit itself or from the cards, the journaling cards that I cut up like you saw earlier, um, or the uh, word phrase sticker bundle that is available as well uh, and that really covers a variety of different sorts of things that we may encounter in our lives. Uh, I actually really like how this turned out. It'll be interesting to look back on it again in the future and see, you know, do I do I like this approach? What's my favorite kind of approach? You know, that's something that I usually do. Um, excuse me, again, before I tackle uh, the next year, look back at what I did uh, the year before. Uh, I'm liking the simplicity of this. Yes, I could have add more. I could add more embellishments. I could add, you know, some sequins or something else on there. But I'm really liking the focus on um, one embellishment added along with the time there. And there were a couple places throughout here where I screwed up on the time, or I had AM instead of PM. So that's something to think about as you're going through the process of um, adding your own time if you're doing it that way. Uh, I actually just left it. Uh, there's one instance where I covered it up with something else just because it was really easy to do that and you'll see that um, at some point here. And then in other places I just left it and I was like, you know what, if I look at a picture and it says 10 p.m. and it's totally light out, like, I'll be able to tell, right? Or who, someone else will be able to tell. Here's a flip up I did for Tuesday. This is where I added on those plastic numbers that were included in the kit, the one, the two, and the three. I did pull this apart a little bit to be able to staple that on there. That seemed like the best uh, way to attach that. It does come up, come off a little bit on the bottom of the page. I decided that was okay because it's within um, the, the kind of outer boundary of the album itself. So there's that part. Uh, I added the rubber embellishments in a few places. I think one was back here on one of the six by eights. I just did them when they seemed to make sense with the photo itself. Uh, most of the time I did these horizontal uh, or this, I think this is the only vertical one that I did. I could have put it, in, put it at the top or I could have used one of the flags and you'll see those pop up here and there as well. Um, again, repeating the same thing. So the, this last piece of the process for me was really just pulling out each of the photos and finding something to add on to them to go along with the um, the time and I and I varied it so you won't see like I didn't use all of these stickers on every photo sometimes I use the flags sometimes I use the pieces of the cards that I cut up the journaling cards that I cut up um, there's the time stamped on the top moving into Wednesday um, then you can see just adding again cut up journal card uh, there was the circle one that I cut, cut out uh, let's see same thing, just varying it around. There were some times where I did them at an angle or if it didn't go on perfectly straight, like I didn't care about any of that kind of stuff. Um, it, even when it was at an angle, a lot of times the additional embellishment that I put on there, I, I had that 
go on as an angle as well. Here's Thursday, using the coffee, ru the rubber piece there. Um, you, again, using the flags, part of the flag, or turning the flag over if it had a sentiment on it that didn't make sense for the story, uh, and e adding that on there. There's one that's kind of going on a, on a diagonal there. And flipping through. So again, what I did to get the times was I just re referred back to the journaling where I had all the times already. Uh, there have been... There have been lots of years where I didn't record times, uh, and this time I ended up doing it that way. So it was it worked good for being able to use that that rolling stamp and adding it on there. There's where I used some of the quotation marks from the big chipboard set, and again the time over there, and then moving into the weekend. You know, each one of these different phases takes time uh, to work through and like you guys have heard me talk about before in the past there have been times where I did all of Monday first and then all of Tuesday and at this time it was more my process was more focused on the um, you know I did all the words first and didn't really I mean I still did it Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday through there uh, but I didn't approach just one day at a time so it's definitely more um, I feel like it's a really cohesive look uh, at the week via these photos and, and the words added on there too. So again, lots of the um, the perforated uh, phrases added in there, um, the big chipboard piece, and then just one of the words watching at the bottom there. Moving into Saturday, there's the reading one. I got that rubber circle added on there. And then a few more here. Coming into the last day. It was kind of fun to just play around too with like where was I going to stamp the time on? You know, where did it fit on there? Um, how could I creatively find a, a home for the time? You know, using the, like the line right there and adding that on. Again, totally could add more embellishments here if you wanted to. But this time I just, I wanted to, I wanted it to be less... Um, less embellished, I guess, and, and just really let the words in the photos with a few extra things help uh, to move the story forward. That was my choice for my approach this year. Next year may be totally different. Again, you know, I've done this project for more than 10 years or 10 years, 10 years or more uh, now and have done it lots of different ways and have lot have had lots of Kind of iterations of, of the project come to be and, and I like that part of it and I like um, you know the kind of the evolution of it as it goes along and, and you know based on my own seasons of life my own things that are happening um, and finding the little homes for that so that's how I'm ending is on the last page there that just says this life with that one um, with the time added on there sometimes people like to add an additional page protector at the end um, some sort of wrapping it up but this was fine for me to just kind of stop there at that point uh, as my end point for this week I want to just say a really big thank you again to everybody who participated in this project uh, this year. We will be back again next year with another um, kit and another week of documentation and lots more encouragement to document your your story, the week of your own story. Uh, now, just in case those of you that don't know, we do a few other projects over the course of the year. I do a few other projects over the course of the year. Uh, I do a couple day in the life projects where we just um, document one day and we usually have a small mini kit to go along with that. Uh, we have one of those that will be coming up in June, I believe. We don't have set dates for that. And then two more uh, at later this year. We also will be doing a December daily project. So if you want to do a month of documentation, um, for December daily, I, I only do one story per day. So you wouldn't see, like, I'm not going in this uh, depth or in this detail for each day during December daily. I just focus on one story uh, per day, but I built an album that is similar, you know, same size uh, that focuses on the way that we celebrate the season uh, in our household. And so we usually start talking about that or at least put the kits on sale 
uh, in early September generally so we'll see if that we're on track for this year for that uh, and then that obviously takes place during the month of December but for any information on more classes or kits or products you can uh, check out my website ellieedwards.com you may be here you may be seeing this on YouTube or somewhere else um, I also do have monthly story kits for those of you that might be interested in a monthly dose of storytelling uh, those kits include a classroom each month that has uh, education that goes along with the theme of the kit all geared towards uh, encouraging and empowering you to tell the stories of your own life. So if you want more information about that, you can click on the Story Kits link uh, at the top of my Allie Edwards design page. And I hope to see you guys around.